everyone. Welcome to this episode of the SOS Show. SOS stands for Strategy Over Spaghetti. <laughs> Welcome to this, this week's episode of the show. I'm delighted to have you here. And what we're going to talk about this week is voice. And that refers to a writer's voice. I get a lot of questions about this. People will say, how do I find my voice? Or they'll say, thank you for helping me find my voice if they've worked with me. And I wanted to talk about what voice is and also what the most important elements are of good writing. And the one that is least important might end up surprising you. So let's dive in. And if you have questions, feel free to put them in the comments. If I don't see them now, then I can come back around and answer them later. So the main idea is what is voice in the first place? Well, voice is when our personality comes through on the page. And the way that happens is through our word choice, which is sometimes which is also referred to as diction. Um, it's also it also involves how we see and describe the world. So a lot of times the way we describe the world is revealing something about us as writers. That's one thing that can freak people out a little bit when they're writing. And other things that can contribute to it, and this is in my opinion, my definition of it, other people might have different ideas. I think the length of your sentences contributes to voice. There are some writers who write in short, choppy sentences, others who write in very long, convoluted sentences with lots of commas. All of this contributes to voice. When you can look at a piece of writing and make some guesses as to who wrote that, then that's when you know that writer has voice or when you read something and you say, oh, this sounds like, you know, insert name of person. Sometimes your spelling choices can be a part of it. That's a more minor part. But if there are certain words that you spell differently for a certain reason, then that can also help your voice um, be identified by others. And your turns of phrase can also help you set, um, stand out and identify your voice to others. So for instance, I often say holy cocktails. Um, I have other turns of phrase that I insert into my copy and they were just turns of phrase that popped out of my mouth and I began to use them more frequently because I liked them <laughs> and they add to the creation of my voice. So you might find that you also have turns of phrase that you use that sound a little bit different from what other people say or are saying. And so that's something to um, keep in mind. Now I'm going to give you examples of the different kinds of voice, and then I'm going to share with you what are some of the least important elements of writing that might actually that might be quite a surprise to everyone listening today. So first, some examples of different kinds of voice. One um, one aspect of voice that I mentioned earlier was word choice. So I'd like you to listen to these two sentences. I walked through the crowd versus I swam through the crowd. Now you might think it's only a one word change. What is the big deal? These sentences are almost the same, but the verb is different and the verb gives you a different image. And if you are a writer who chooses verbs that are a little bit unusual, that can contribute to you having a voice that is yours. The other thing is sentence structure or use of fragments. So for instance, in Joan Didion's book, um, uh, The Year of Magical Thinking, sorry, it took me a minute to think of what the title was. In The Year of Magical Thinking by Joan Didion, she has a phrase, um, the question of self-pity. Now she's sitting at a table or it's just after her husband has passed away unexpectedly during dinner and she uses this fragment. And the fragment works because she's writing about this stressful time after her husband has just passed away. It's a shocking time. It's a disjointed time. This fragment itself is disjointed and it evokes that time period in her life. So in that, that is an excellent example of the way a sentence structure can bring forth a larger experience that the writer or author is having. This applies mostly to nonfiction, by the way. So if you're writing fiction, there'll be elements from what I just said that you can take, but primarily this is for nonfiction when you know exactly how the I or the you, the person in the story is feeling. And it conveys that disjointed feeling through that sentence fragment within the larger context of the chapter. 
and then within the even larger context of the entire book. So a few examples for you of voice. I'm going to give you a couple, and um, I can also write about this in my newsletter so you guys can kind of see it, examine it, uh, you know, copy and paste it and use it for yourself. So this is something that I can share out via email as well. But um, simple, a simple and clear voice. I'm driving a car. Very simple. You know exactly what I'm doing. You know who's involved. Like there's everything there, right? I'm driving a car. Very simple. It's not the most interesting sentence, but it's simple and it's clear, right? So now let's look into weird and creative. What's a weird and creative voice? Um, I'm hopping onto my motorized horse now, cowpoke. <laughs> so it is weird, right? And we don't know for sure what a motorized horse is, do we? So there might be some other sentences around that that explain it, okay? Um, scientific, this would be a more scientific voice. I'm not sure I captured the scientific voice exactly, but you'll get the idea of it. The next step of the plan is to enter into the vehicle which has a V6 engine, which was invented by dot, dot, dot. And it would go on stating different facts about the car and about, about the experience of driving the car. So that's more scientific. Mean and sarcastic. So a mean sarcastic voice might be, um, why don't I just get into the car and drive away? So the person sounds maybe angry, mean, sarcastic. That's also a type of voice. And then authoritative, right? The authoritative voice is telling you what to do. Um, sometimes this can be used to good effect. Sometimes it can be used to bad effect. Um, there's all these different permutations as to what to do when, but authoritative would be, we all must get into the car now. There's that collective we, like we're all gonna go do it. Let's go do it. And it's just telling us what to do. Next, inspirational influencer. So if you think of influencers, and uh, people who refer to themselves that way, who share a lot of inspirational posts and so on, um, it might be something like this. When we all drive cars through the Western desert, we can ponder how grateful we are for friends and family. There's nothing like driving at sunset, drinking a green smoothie to get the mind thinking about the big things in life. So you can see there's a lot of words in there. I inserted the green smoothie just to be funny. I actually like green smoothies, <laughs> but just to, just to be funny. And then um, overly poetic, I must get into my car. I ask that you not harden your heart. Please join me on this journey. Okay, not quite a poem, but it, you know, it gets, it's a bit of a poetic voice. So you can see how something as simple as talking about driving your car someplace can be written about in all these different ways. At any given time in writing, you have lots of these choices in front of you to make when it comes to writing your piece. And that's one of the things that people find so difficult about writing. Now, the, the element that I wanted to talk to you, you about regarding what's the least important, it's the least important at first. So the least important at first, when you first are starting to write, is the punctuation and the grammar. It does matter later on. It really does. It's very important later on. But when you're first laying the words down, which I like to think about is laying the paint on the canvas, when you're first getting that paint on the canvas, it's not going to be perfect. And that is OK. We don't worry about commas. If your subjects and verbs don't agree, we're just not going to really worry about that. Maybe you added an S onto a word and made it plural when it needs to be singular. We're not going to worry about that when you're just getting the ideas down. That is going to come later on in the process. The first step is getting those ideas down, getting a good idea, and making sure that your message in your writing is going to be really clear. Now, other things I'll be talking about in the future are things that you need to know about tone in your writing um, and also gathering your ideas and things like that. And if you have any questions that you want me to answer, feel free to message me uh, on you know, any platform where you're seeing this. Uh, feel free to come to my monthly roundtable, which is every Wednesday at 11, sorry, not every Wednesday, every third Wednesday of the month at 11 a.m. Eastern. And then I have these shows every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Eastern. So you have a lot of ways you can get in touch with me if you have questions about your writing, if you uh, want to get a little bit of help or look at something. These are some of the ways that I show up for people and show up for my community to be able to give people help to keep them moving forward on their writing projects. Because look, I know it's not easy to write. It's not an easy thing to do. And we can easily become stymied, frustrated, stuck. And if you do ever feel that way, just know it's totally normal. 
everyone goes through it at some point. But anyway, I hope to see you um, at one of my future roundtables, third Wednesday of the month, 11 a.m. Eastern. And I'll put the link down below so you can um, connect with us there. It'd be great to see you. All right, take care. Bye.